All right, Don, I know who you are, but tell everybody else who you are and what you're doing here. I'm Don Minshew. Actually, I'm president of Weewaw Hitchcock Search and Rescue, but I was a shelter manager here at the Hunterville Shelter in Weewaw Hitchcock, Florida. This is the only shelter in Guff County. Uh, we, uh, we opened the shelter at 9 o'clock on Tuesday, uh, the day before the hurricane actually made landfall. Uh, Tuesday night we had approximately 70 people come in and evacuate and move into the shelter. And by the time the storm made landfall on Wednesday, we had 266 people in the shelter. At 11 o'clock on that Wednesday, we lost all communications. We lost our, our phones, our internet, Sheriff's Department lost their towers. We, we were absolutely, totally in the black. No communication whatsoever. Uh, once we got the roads open enough, we could send a runner down to St. Joe and bring back messages. But until Thursday night, when amateur radio operators showed up and started handling traffic for us, radio traffic for us, to get uh, the missions in here we needed, like the showers and the, and the porta toilets and all the things we needed to continue operating this shelter in an efficient manner, uh, we had no way of making any kind of communication to do so. Secondly, our, our amateur radio operators have continued through the time in, in assisting us on getting messages in on, on people that basically I call it wellness checks. People just want to make sure their, kids, their loved ones was safe. We've done some of those. Uh, and you know, the whole thing is without them until Sunday night, we had no other communications whatsoever. So from Wednesday at 11 o'clock to Sunday night about 7.30, Without them, we, we had to send runners back and forth to Port St. Joe to even communicate with the EOC. Now, it's Wednesday afternoon now, a week after the storm hit. Yes. And the amateur radio operators are being redeployed to other places that still need help. You had communications on Sunday night, so why did you keep the hams here? Because we were still without direct communication with state EOC and then able to get our missions in here. Okay, so you were able to talk inside the county, but not outside the county? That's correct. Is this your first time doing like a disaster with ham radio? No. Okay. I worked Opal. I worked uh, Kate. I worked way back in 75, I think it was Eloise. Um, I've been with, I've been with municipalities since 1973 in, in this area, so. So you, I know you had some, a lot of praise. Is there anything that you think could have been done better or more efficiently, or what, what can we learn from this, if this happens again, to actually do this better? The shelters need to be staffed up and equipped and ready to take the people at the time they open. Well, I'm specifically and, talking about ham radio, but and, yeah, that well, too. Well, uh, that. Oh, have, have that, the ham radio operators there? Sitting here yeah. at, at the time, prior to it making landfall, I mean, when I say have the shelters ready, that means an operator on site. Uh, I mean, if we, 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 didn't, we didn't have a satellite phone, so we were out of, just totally out of communication with our amateur radio operators. Okay, so I, I was uh, the first ham to get here, and I, was, I came here through a comedy of errors. I was sent to find where FEMA was going to drop off something because they had the wrong address. It was somebody's double wide down the road. And I came in here, I think, just after dark, on, on Thursday. Thursday after the storm yeah, hit what, Wednesday. What, what went through your mind when an amateur radio, and it's not about me, but it was amateur radio and a way to talk to the rest of the world. What went through your mind or through your heart emotions when, when that became available for you? It's difficult to describe because I knew what you could do. And by having you, I knew we had just opened a chain of communications that, you know, we've been running around in circles, one foot nailed to the floor until you got here. And, and like I said, having worked with them before, I, I knew what capabilities we had. I knew or what amateur radio operators had. And uh, it was just a, a blessing. It was such a relief off of me because I'm having to find somebody to send them to St. Joe prior to that time to even, even talk to the emergency management operator. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it was really a blessing once, once we got an operator on site. And I think it's key that, when, and I know it's difficult in tracking. Uh, I've always said that one thing I know is the hurricane goes where it wants to go. 
but when it looks like it's definitely making a line in to make landfall in a given area, though, if they're opening shelters, they need to have them ready. And, and amateur radio on site would be part of the readiness I'm talking about. Okay. Anything else you want to say before we turn this off? I think, by far, this is the worst storm I've ever been involved in. Me too. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of lessons to learn from this thing. So we, uh, and I think as long as we learn those lessons, in the future we'll be a lot better off if something like this happens again. Thank you. Oh, heck, I, I needed to record that. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I know you.